So welcome everybody to the second part of the lecture. This is the 13th lecture of wireless communication course. In this lecture, we will be talking about multiple input, multiple output systems. So basically, before MIMO, we talked about diversity as a technique to mitigate the effect of fading. We also talked about adaptive modulation as a technique to to adapt according to the situation of the fading, whether large or scale, whether large or small. And this technique called multiple input, multiple output is a technique that can help us in many ways. First, it can help us improve the spectral efficiency of the system and increase the capacity of the channel. It can help us avoid the fading of the channel and mitigate it significantly. It can help us in avoiding interference. It can help us in security. It can help us in tracking and detection. And so MIMO it has so many applications in wireless and other fields as well. So in today's lecture, we will be talking, uh, we will explain MIMO, give an introduction about it, then the channel decomposition concept of MIMO, then MIMO channel capacity, MIMO beam forming, and how to use MIMO as a diversity technique, how to use it as multiplexing technique, and understand the trade-off and ask the question whether someone can come up with a technique, MIMO technique that can break that trade-off. And then finally discuss a little bit about the MIMO receiver design. So before we talk about MIMO in general, as we said, MIMO multiple input, multiple outputs. Yes. Before that, we have uh, before MIMO we have SISO or CISO, single input, single output. One antenna at the transmitter, one antenna at the receiver, as you can see here. Yes. This, this is the transmitter, this is the receiver, and you have here one antenna. This is the transmitter side and one antenna at the receiver. But this we call it single input, single output. What do we have else? We have the case when you have one antenna at the transmitter and multiple antennas at the receiver. What do we call this? We call it SIMO or SIMO, single input, multiple output. We have the case when we have multiple antennas at the transmitter and one antenna at the receiver. We call this case MISO, multiple input, single output. And we have the case where we have multiple input at the transmitter, multiple, output, multiple antennas at the transmitter, multiple antennas at the receiver. We call this general case MIMO, which we'll, we will be studying. This case includes all the other cases, obviously. Well, the other cases become subset of it. So MIMO system basically have multiple transmitter receive antennas. MT here stands for the number of antennas at the transmitter and MR stands for the number of antennas at the receiver. So your data here, your data is X, your data vector, which, which includes MT number of symbols. You just take these symbols and they transmit each one from an antenna. So at a time, instead of transmitting one symbol, you are transmitting empty number of symbols, yes? So your data rate increases by the number of antennas. You can increase it theoretically by the number of antennas. And you have your received vector Y, which is Y1, Y. This is the receive. Y1 means the received data from the first antenna, and YMR from the last antenna. And this is the signal propagation. This is how the signal from this antenna goes to the first, goes to the second, goes to the third. And what these multiple arrows cause to each other? They cause interference. Yes, they cause severe inter and uh, inter-channel interference, we call it. And the system, the mathematical model of MIMO system is basically can be written as follows. Y, the received signal, is equal to the channel matrix H multiplied by X, the input vector symbol, plus N, where N is the noise. Now you know the meaning of all these variables and you know how to model it. X is vector, H is matrix, matrix Y is vector, N is vector. And you have here condition on the transmit power. Your transmit power must not exceed rho. And this can be bare antenna or can be on average. 
So usually in the literature they use an average, but in practical situation you must use bare antenna because air, each antenna is attached to power amplifier usually. And the power amplifier is constrained with certain power. So it's better to use the power constraint bare antenna, not on average. So anyway, this is average. Expectation of x multiplied by x Hermitian, what does it give? It gives x magnitude square yes and this what this is power so the average power is rho which is power over uh, which is related to the signal to noise ratio input described by vector x we explained it dimension mt output y dimension mr channel is mr by mt Suppose you have here two antennas at the receiver, three antennas at the receiver. What's the dimension of each? Two by three. You put the received antennas before the transmit antennas. Design and capacity analysis depends on what's known about channel. Now we know the advantages of NOM, the advantages of MIMO. I explained them and why it's so significant and important. It has many advantages. But uh, to achieve these advantages, those advantages they don't come spontaneously you must do something at the transmitter or receiver side to exploit this and make use of these things so the design and the capacity analysis of mine which depends on what's known about the channel if you know the channel at the transmitter or receiver or at both sides or the channel is not known what would be the optimal design in each case similar to the case when we calculated the channel capacity over different fading channels we were saying if the channel is not known, no closed form, if the channel is known, if it's not known, if, it's, if it is available at the transmitter or receiver side, and so on and so forth. So if channel is unknown at the transmitter, you need vector modulation, demodulation, you, can, you don't have too much freedom in optimizing your transmit, and your, your, your data. But if, you, if the channel is known at the transmitter and receiver, then you have a different scenario, different case. For a static channel, when you have a static channel, what do I mean by the channel is static? It means we are indoor, sitting uh, apart from each other, and there is no many things changing inside the room. So mostly the channel is static. Wi-Fi channels mostly static. They do change when you move because the indoor environment is protecting you from the outdoor thing and there is no mobility, too much mobility. You are closing the door, no cars, no this. It changes on mostly when you move, when you move inside the home and this, or also when something happens. But it's it's static environment. That's why we call the resulting channel static channel. This channel, we love it for adaptation. Why? Because the channel stays constant for a long period of time. But it changes from one location to another because there is rich multipath inside indoor as well. So with perfect channel state information at transmitter and receiver, power water filling over space is optimal. Do you know the, you remember the water filling algorithm? For the, we, we used to measure the channel in time or frequency, yes? But here, the x-axis, time or frequency, and we used to do water filling. If, it is the, if the channel is bad, increase the power allocated over this sub-channel. But in space, what do we have? We have your transmit signal is actually over the antennas. That your antennas form a beam or multiple beams. So each beam is facing a different channel. So some channels are good, some are bad. So you adopt, you do water filling, the things you learn there, but along the space, along the antennas, not along the time or frequency. Without the transmitter channel knowledge, capacity metric is based on an outage probability. If you don't know the channel at the transmitter, then you consider the outage probability metric. At the receiver side, you can only say what would be the outage of the capacity of achieving certain rate so this is b this this is denoted by b out outage probability which is the probability that the channel capacity given 
the channel realization is below the transmission rate. For large array, when you have massive MIMO, random channel gains converge to static values. Now this 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 statement here in 2010 when it appeared it was groundbreaking. Nobody believed it. It was really hard to convince people that this works. Math surprised us in 2010 and showed that the random channel gains converged to static values. And at that point, we call the channel, we, we, we say that the channel is hard, channel hardening concept. And I explained to you in the previous course and also in one of the lectures that massive MIMO when you have large number of antennas and you co-phase them properly, then you have the expectation co-phase them using maximum ratio combining at the receiver side. The expectation of what? H1 squared plus H1 to H2 squared plus till 200 or 300 or 1000 antenna depends. This expectation of all these values becomes almost constant. You remove the effect of fading, no fluctuations in your channel because the probability of making error reduces significantly because you have diversity, too many paths redundant to each other. If your channel is bad here, bad here, bad here, bad here, it cannot be bad in all of them simultaneously. So this is the beauty of it. And the good thing when you, when you, you multiply your coefficients with another channel that's independent from it, it cancels out to zero. So no inter-user interference. And even your noise fades away, goes away. If you have, in theory, if you have infinity number of antennas, when you multiply, the, when you do maximum ratio combining, you, max, you multiply n by h conjugate. In this case, the expectation of this value tends to be zero, goes to zero. So you are left with what? Y is equal to your data. Each user gets his data. Because the, the interference cancels to zero, the noise goes to zero, this channel became constant. What a beautiful thing. But in practice, we cannot use infinity number of antennas. We, use, we can use up to 100. But still, this can bring bring us some of these advantages. The interference reduces significantly. The channel looks like constant, in practice even. So this is amazing. This is very beautiful, but also very costly. So the capacity here, the, uh, the capacity you can achieve with the MIMO system is the minimum of the number of antennas between the transmitter and receiver. Which one has minimum number of antennas? For example, the data streams you can transmit for the case when you have a MIMO system of 10 by 5 is maximum independent data stream, 5, because 5 is the minimum of 5 and 10. Without having... Without, well, there, there will be interference, but you can support, your channel can support up to 5. Because at the end of the day, what do you care? You care about what? The rank, the channel rank, how many independent paths. So this takes you to linear algebra, understanding the ranks, how many independent eigenvectors for the matrix, and the number of eigenvectors determines the number of different independent paths you can send over your channel. If channel H known, water filling over space can be used or space-time coding like Alamoti. No, space-time, there is kind of coding that depends on the channel and there is a coding that does not depend. Alamoti coding does not depend on the channel. Does not use the knowledge of the channel at the transmitter. So which, which one is better, to use the channel at the transmitter or not to use it? This, it depends actually. When you use it, you obtain more gain, but 
uh, you delay your system and you increase the complexity and you increase the signaling overhead. But when you don't use it, you don't get optimal gain, but you simplify your transmitter and receiver design. Without a transmitter channel knowledge, capacity is based on an outage probability, which is described as follows. This is the B outage. The probability that this value, which is the channel capacity, which is the data rate you can, is greater than the capacity of your channel. This is a summary of what's MIMO system and the capacity, a summary of the previous few slides. But the point here I want to make is that the MIMO channel, you can decompose it into different size of channels, separate, different separated size of channels that they don't interfere with each other. How do you do that? You have this channel and you have this interference coming from all of them. The channel H can be decomposed mathematically using singular value decomposition. And from this decomposition, you, you can know the eigenvectors. The eigenvectors in math are used in MIMO as beamforming vectors. Beamforming vectors, these are optimal. Since they are eigenvalues, eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. They don't interfere with each other. You use these eigenvalues to form the eigen the beam forms of the MIMO system. So at the end of the day, you end up like this. You have here two antennas, let's say, at the transmitter, two antennas at the receiver. The system, after you design it in such a way, you get something like this. As if each, each antenna is talking to one antenna. Although this is not line of sight, non-line of sight this. I, imagine as if each antenna is talking to only one antenna, no interference, everything is nice. But there is effect of fading, of course, of the channel on each one. But there is no inter-channel inter inter interference between them. How do you do that? You take H, you go to linear algebra, take the singular value decomposition, after you do the singular value decomposition, if you remember, you get U, Sigma, and V, Hermitian. Now, U and V are matrices that contains the eigenvectors. And Sigma, this contains eigenvalues at the diagonal. So this is diagonal matrix, and this matrix where each column in it represents an eigenvector that can be used to form a beam. And these are used to, for, to produce this and avoid the inter-channel interference. So basically you can turn a MIMO system into multiple separate channels in space, where each channel can be seen as size of system. So this is basically the concept. You have your data here. You th th this is the first column of V matrix, V1. And this is the second column. This is the third column. And here your data. You multiply each symbol with this beamforming vector, which is the eigenvalue vector. And then you send it from, you send this from the antennas. And at the receiver, you do the same. You use another eigenvector to map and project your data in your direction, in your orthogonal domain. And you gather all the symbols and put them in a vector at the receiver to get your data back. So this is X, you multiply it by V, then you send it over the channel, and at the receiver, you use U Hermitian to get your symbol back. And this is the noise. Since you are at the receiver using U hair machine, U hair machine get multiplied with the noise as well. This transform your system into a size of system with diversity. Array and you can get array and diversity gain. It greatly simplifies encoding and decoding. Channel indicates the best direction to beam form. Needs sufficient knowledge for optimality of beam forming. You must know the channel perfectly at the transmitter and receiver to get good performance. 
If there is a mismatch between the knowledge of the, of the channel at the transmitter and that at the receiver, you, you will get some degradation in your performance. Now, how can we use MIMO system? We can use the most common two cases for MIMO is to use them for diversity or for multiplexing. Multiplexing, you use them for multiplexing to gain more spectral efficiency and to increase your data rate or throughput. For example, you have multiple antenna here. You, you have your data vector x1, x, x2, x3. You put, you send x3 from here, x2 from here, x3 from here. So at a, at a time, at one time, one frequency, you are sending three symbols. In conventional system that you use SISO, only one. So this is great. It doubles your throughput, it enhances your throughput significantly. This is one case, but what's the problem with this case? It's very nice, it increases my throughput, increases my data rate. Why won't I always use it like this? The problem with it is that it causes inter-channel interference. And to avoid that, you need to perform beamforming technique, uh, equalization, avoid uh, interference, and this and that. Like the previous technique, beamforming, it's one of the techniques used to minimize the effect of the interference between them. Other, another use case for MIMO is to use it for diversity. What do you do with diversity? You get X1 and you send it from all the antennas. So you tell me this is not efficient. You have three antennas and you are sending only one symbol at a time at frequency, yes? I tell you, yes, it's not efficient in terms of data rate and the throughput, but it provides you diversity. You are sending your same signal from different paths. So it increases your bit error rate. So the diversity case is used to enhance your bit error rate. And this used to improve your capacity, data rate, throughput, spectral efficiency. So this is, this. which one has less error? The diversity. Which one, which one has more throughput? Multiplexing gain. These are the two cases, the most common two cases used. Now again, the, the, here there is also trade-off. Trade-off not only in modulation between throughput and better rate, also in MIMO, due to the, the way we design it. So the question, can we ask a research question here? Can we come up with a technique that can enhance the performance of bit error rate and the robot simultaneously by utilizing MIMO system? Both of them. When you mix, you, you don't get the full of each one of them. When you use only multiplexing, you get the full gain of multiplexing and zero in diversity, which is this case. This, this full multiplexing, zero diversity. This, the zero for diversity and this for multiplexing, minimum M and N. M for the number of, uh, for transmit and receive antennas, M and N. And here you get what? Zero multiplexing gain, M multiplied by N diversity gain. For example, if you have three antennas at a transmitter and two antennas at a receiver, what's the diversity gain? Three multiplied by two. You have six different paths you can receive your symbol from, which is nice. Yes? You get your path here. Three, three by three, how many, diverse, how many diversity paths? Nine, because this sense and all of them receives from it, and this sense all of them receives from it. This sense all of them receive. How many different paths this receiver receive? Nine, and these all paths carrying the same symbol. You just utilize these multiple paths to enhance the performance of that single symbol. But here, here all of them receive the three symbols. So this, this guy wants to only decode X1, but unfortunately, it's corrupted with X2 and X3 act as interference to it. And this, the same. 
So to do that, we are using that decomposition thing to avoid the interference between them. But that one is also costly and work, works well under certain conditions. But, but, but also, in that one, even, even if I re remove the interference here and get the full multiplexing gain, I'm not getting diversity gain. This case, yes, the, the, the one I explained here, it removes the inter channel interference, yes? This antenna, if you use this technique, the beam forming, the decomposition, you receive your data from the corresponding antennas and you cancel the interference coming from the other antennas but you don't receive a different path for your same symbol yes so this helps in reducing the interchannel interference but does not help in providing you diversity for the same for the same symbol i'm saying for the same symbol the way that this system provides i'm saying so you have Diversity, multiplexing, and multiplexing, its performance can be enhanced by beamforming, the decomposition, singular value decomposition, to remove the interchannel interference. But still, you don't have this M by N diversity gain in that. Clear? There is a trade-off, significant trade-offs. The question, the research question is that, can you make use of these two words simultaneously you are transmitting the question is that can you transmit multiple antennas from multiple symbols from multiple antennas and they provide provide full multiplexing gain full diversity gain this is the challenging question is this solved in the literature no like the previous problem i gave to you is this possible to be solved this nobody knows show me a technique bring me something that works so this is something that can trigger your mind to think these two things challenging questions that i posed one in the previous lecture and one here one related to modulation and one related to mimo relate specifically to the trade-off between multiplexing and data rate these are disruptive ideas if you can come up with practical solutions for them yes this is not normal things to do how should antennas be used question what's your answer there is a case that provides me diversity and a case that provides me multiplexing how should i use it when should I use this? When should I use that? You tell me, it depends on the application, on the requirements. If, if I'm using video, maybe it's better to provide higher data rate. If I am using a critical, important message to be sent, or a FTB uploading, or this or that. Diversity. So this is the case. For example, this is a video when you transmit it with for, using multiplexing. So you get high quality, but you don't have enough diversity. Sometimes you have these things. And this is when you transmit it using diversity. So which video you like to see? That you, you want your video to be transmitted over multiplexing or diversity you like to watch the video like this or this this is high quality but there are small sometimes the bit error rate you cannot decode some of the bits it's fine since it's quickly flicker flickering and skipping to the to, to the other frames you don't your eyes cannot notice this because it keeps changing faster than your eye can recognize it but this, always like this for all the frames, it's gonna kill me, this. Yes? So, got the sense of where to use it, how to use it? Depends on end-to-end -end metric. 
which is actually defined by the application. So this is, we talked about the MIMO the, at the transmitter, uh, that its use cases, uh, the advantages, uh, how to use it based on the application. Now, how to design the receiver? If you are using, uh, if you are using diversity case, the receiver has to use maximum ratio combining and optimal allocation, something like this. If it is uh, multiplexing, the receiver has to be able to cancel the interference between the channels. So, the optimal receiver is maximum likelihood. Maximum likelihood, as the name implies, what do you do? For loop at the trans at the receiver, for loop over all the possible symbols that the transmitter can send, and find the one that's closest to my received signal. Then most probably this is the one that the transmitter sent. What's the problem with this? It's extremely complex. The complexity of these detectors grows exponentially. As the, number, as the number of antennas at the receiver, at the transmitter and receiver increase, and as the constellation diagram increases. So it's really not very efficient solution. And that's why in LTE, we were limited to only eight by eight. In the standard, we couldn't use more than eight by eight at before like in 2010, 2012, we didn't use many antennas. We couldn't use many antennas, although we know they bring too many advantages, but due to the complexity of the receiver, if I let the receiver per do this extremely computationally complex processing to detect the symbols, your battery will run away quickly. And everybody noticed this. Everybody, I noticed this myself, when I switch to LTE network, my battery just flies, just goes very quickly, it drains. While when I am on 3G, it doesn't drain very rapidly. Doesn't use this, maybe also in 2G. 2G is the most power efficient system. Yes, when you are in 2G, for one hour, your battery can be the same if you are not using applications and not using internet. But when you switch to 4G and use 4G internet, uh, it's, uh, everybody experienced this. This is a problem. Well, that's why we prefer to use Wi-Fi. Why? Because Wi-Fi is closer to us here. It, it transmits that your mobile phone to reach the base station does not need to send large amount of power. But your cellular tower is one kilometer sometimes, or 100 meter away from you, two, one kilometer sometimes. To reach there, you need to increase the power to compensate the path loss. So your power, your battery power goes away. That's why we don't like this system. We like the tower to be close to us so that we don't need to transmit too much power. And the, power, the tower does not need to transmit too much power to us. Linear receiver, there is an optimal receiver, which is maximum likelihood. Optimal gives you the optimal performance, but it's so complex. There is all, another type of receiver, we call them linear receivers. These are less complex, but what's the price you pay here? They don't give you the optimal performance, like maximum, rate, maximum likelihood. Example on this, zero forcing forces of diagonal elements to zero. In this case, this is your received, this is your channel matrix, and uh, you try, you try to make the effect of the channel in your data coming from all the off diagonal elements zero. Because these the off diagonal elements are the ones are causing inter channel interference to your intended symbol. You just want to receive here values like this is Y, Z, A, M on the main diagonal. But those off the diagonal, I want them to be zero because those are the one 
which are killing my performance and degrading it. This is the off diagonal elements in the channel are causing inter channel interference. This is zero forcing, but it enhances the noise actually at the receiver. The noise grows rapidly when you try to do that. Your channel, you try to equal your channel at the transmitter, you try at the receiver, you try to just divide by it. But when you divide, let's let's put it in the mathematical equation, in a mathematical equation to understand. This is the received sig vector, and this is H, your channel, and this is your data vector, transmitted data vector, plus what? Plus noise vector. The zero forcing receiver divides over the channel, divides this over H. Now what happens here? You try to kill this channel, try to remove the effect of the channel totally, yes? But what happens to the noise? When the channel is low in deep fade, you are dividing a value over zero. What happened to the noise? Goes extremely high. You enhance it. So you fix the problem of the channel. You killed yourself by the problem of the noise. So you try to fix something. You mess with the other thing. To, to, to avoid this problem, to mitigate this problem, not to avoid, we use minimum mean square error. This try to balance zero forcing against noise enhancement. Intelligent, like kind of inter optimize the uh, zero. Try to avoid fading, but also not increase the noise in between. So. But it's a little bit more complex than the zero forcing. And we have the sphere decoder. Only considers possibilities within a sphere of received symbol. So within a sphere, you try to decode your signal. You don't need to decode it among all the points. Sphere decoding. This is ML decoding. For loop over all the possible transmitted points. But here, within a sphere. And within a sphere, you can do ML, within a sphere. If minimum distance symbol is within a sphere, optimal, otherwise null is returned. This is the basic structure. This is for ML, this is for sphere decoding, which is less complex. So this is basically MIMO. MIMO, everybody loves MIMO, everybody wants to employ MIMO. We like these Wi-Fi routers with multiple antennas because they increase our data rate and they increase the multipath in our system. So it has many advantages. Besides the diversity and multiplexing, we use them in physical layer security. Would they provide with MIMO, we can have larger degree of freedom to provide security at the physical layer without using encryption sometimes. So it's really, uh, and also we can use it for aligning the interference. There is also something called uh, DDO, distributed input, distributed output, instead of multiple input, multiple output. In this case, instead of having the antennas at the transmitter at one location, you distribute them in different location. Here antenna, here one antenna, here in different location. And they have the same processing server. What's the good thing about this? The good thing about it, you, you increase the variation and randomness in your channel. And you can, you can uh, locate, you can put your signal and make it available only on a certain location instead of having to have a beam. That, yeah, and, and diversity enhances actually. So this is the good thing about it. So with this, we conclude our lecture with, with the main points that we have taken away from this. MIMO systems exploit multi, multiple antennas at both transmitter and receiver for improving the capacity and providing diversity. With transmitter and receiver channel knowledge, channel decomposes into independent channels, which means there is no inter-channel interference between them whatsoever, but still we cannot provide diversity, significant diversity. 
Capacity of failing MIMO system. With transmitter and receiver channel knowledge, you can use water filling over space. Without the transmit channel state information, outage is the capacity metric. For asymptotically large arrays where you have massive MIMO schemes, capacity is constant, almost. You have hard channel, constant channel. Beamforming transforms MIMO system into a size system. Different separate paths of size of systems with transmit and receive diversity. Here, a transmit and receive diversity is coming by taking part of each and every channel. But because the eigenvalue, eigenvector, is coming from the distribution of all the points inside the matrix. So that, this is the diversity we mean by it, but it's not bad diversity. Coming from, it's not the same symbol going through different paths. It's the, here the diversity we mean the contribution coming from all the elements within H. All of them are contributing. So this is good actually. All of them are contributing, not one of them, because if one of them contributing and that one was bad then your system will be in a bad shape. But if all of them contributing and you take the average, then most probably the good will compensate for the bad and will, will be on the average, everybody. Beam form along direction of maximum singular value. MIMO introduces diversity, multiplexing a trade-off, unfortunately. We asked the research a question about this. We try to question that, try to trigger the, some new ideas, new ways of thinking to break this trade-off if, if it's possible. Optimal use of antennas depends on application. Based on the application, you determine whether you use your antennas for diversity or multiplexing. MIMO receive design trades complexity for performance. There is a trade-off also not between diversity and multiplexing, but also performance in terms of bit error rate and complexity. The more complex your receiver, the better your bit error rate. The less complex, the worse your bit error rate. How do you decide? Your resources at the receiver decides. If you want your battery to last for long, you shouldn't use extremely complex detection techniques. If you have Internet of Things application, it's prohibited to use complex detection techniques. If you have extreme, if you are at the base station where the power always you are taking it from the AC, from the plug. I have infinity power resource. Not infinity, but in a sense that I'm not limited with a battery. Then I can use complex detection techniques. Make sense? MIMO receive design traits, complexity for performance. We, for the receiver to detect the symbols transmitted by MIMO, we can use ML detector, which is optimal, but exponentially complex. Why do we call it exponentially complex? The complexity curve increases exponentially with the increase of the number of antennas and the, the number of modulation order. Linear receivers balance noise enhancement against the stream interference. Sphere decoding provides near ML performance with linear complexity almost. So which one is the best you can choose among all of these? Besides being dependent on the application, Sphere is relatively making balance among all of them. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned what's MIMO and you know how to use it in your future projects and application. Thank you and see you in next lecture. Salam.